for some time now, there's a big, big tradition in entertainment of artists coming out and saying, this is my last one, only to come back and do it again several times. I remember when Jay-Z said he was retired. Ah, that didn't last long. I remember, you know, I've re I was talking to a friend of mine yesterday who said, I've really enjoyed the five movies Soderbergh has done since he said he was retiring. Um, it's just a common thing. And Quentin Tarantino, one of the most celebrated directors in the world, has let it be known that his next film, whatever that film is, uh, is going to be his final movie. He said, I think it what is it, 10? Mm -hmm. He said, the next one's going to be his 10th. That's it. No more. I'm going to do 10, wrap it up, call it a nice day, have a bottle of Chianti. It's all going to be good. He's Hannibal Lecter? Uh, it turns out. Oh my gosh. That, that's his next, that's Clinton. what he wants to retire for. He's got to oh. free up his schedule a little bit. Man. So he's like, I'm, I'm good. I'm going to be done. That's it. Okay. So the question has then been, well, what on earth is that movie going to be? Uh, what's, what's that going to be the 10th film? And everybody's been wondering and wondering and wondering. And well, according to the Hollywood Reporter, they now know what his final 10th film is going to be. And it's going to be a movie called The Movie Critic is going to be the name of it. Now, apparently, much like Once Upon a Time in Hollywood and much like Inglorious Bastards, it's going to be loosely based, loosely based, on a real life story according to the uh, speculation of the people at The Hollywood Reporter about what this movie is going to be about. Now, let's go over to The Hollywood Reporter. This is what they believe it's going to be. And really, I've talked to some people last night that all believe this is the case. The Hollywood Reporter is saying this is what the movie critic is going to be about. It's possible the story focuses on Pauline Kael, one of the most influential movie critics of all time. Uh, Kael, who died in 2001, was not just a critic, but also an essayist and novelist. She was known for her, boy, I don't even know if I'm going to know how to say this, pugnacious her pugnacious fights with editors as well as filmmakers. In the late 1970s, Kale had a very brief tenure working as a consultant for Paramount, a position she accepted at the behest of actor Warren Beatty. The timing of that Paramount job seemed to coincide with the setting of the script, and the filmmaker is known to have a deep respect for Kale, making the odds of her being the subject of the film more likely. Because one of the things that we did know, that The Hollywood Reporter seems to know, is that this the film credits can be set in the 70s. That is the right time period. He seems to like to take real stories of real people and semi-biograph them, semi-fictionalize it a little bit, as he did with, um, with the events of Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I'll tell you what, I love the sounds of this movie. I love the sounds of it. Because, listen, ultimately, at the end of the day, Quentin Tarantino loves Hollywood. He loves Hollywood and the history of Hollywood. He loves it so much. He's a student of it. Uh, he's actually got this book. Uh, what's the name of the damn book again? Uh, that, that He's got this book where he basically tells uh, just all these stories of some of these big iconic movies. And he tells these behind the scenes stories of all these movies and, but going back in the past because he's a student of the art. He's a real, real student of the art. Cinema speculation? Is that That it? might be it. That might be it. I can't remember. Anyway, so... I, I think this sounds great. This sounds fantastic to me. As far as is this going to be his last film, there is cue the Vince McMahon music, no chance in hell. There is no chance in hell this is going to be his last movie. Now, I already hear see hear the keyboard clicking, people writing to me furiously. But John, in these four different times, he said the 10th was going to be his last one. I know he said that. I know he said that. And I completely think he believes it. I 100% believe that in his head, he is like, yes, this 10th movie is going to be my last movie. But there's no way in hell it's going to be. You know why? Because Quentin Tarantino is an artist. He is an artist and a creative force. And it just will not sit. He can try to say, I, I just want to play Boggle for the rest of my life. I want to get those Sudoku puzzles. Is that what you call them? Sudoku? I I want to start collecting Pokemon cards. <laughs> I want to start doing what, whatever it is he wants to do, right? I love all of that. But him. inside of him is a monster, a creative monster that is going to fight and claw. And one of these days, he's going to be sitting down having lunch at his favorite cafe and an idea will hit him. Like he'll see, 
he'll see some woman arguing with the waitress and a concept will pop into his head and he won't be able to shake it. He'll go home and, you know, fiddle around the, the kitchen, whatever. And that, that idea still can be there shaking in his head. He won't be able to shake. He'll be talking to his wife and trying to talk about her day. But while she's talking and he's trying to pay attention to her, he's that idea is going to keep itching and itching and itching. And at some point he's going to sit down on his laptop and he's going, I mean, just theoretically, what would that scene look like? And he's going to type out a couple of paragraphs and it's going to itch and it's itch. There is no way this is going to be his last film. If it is, this sounds like a great one to be, but there's no chance. Anyway, Chris, you you read the article. Mm -hmm. He's going to do this movie again, going back to the period piece kind of is going to go back to the 70s, called the movie critic. It looks like it's going to be based on this at this point. What do you think about it? And do you believe this is going to be Tarantino's last movie? No, no, I don't. I think he's going to make more movies. But, you know, he does love cinema. So maybe he just wants to hang out at like the New Beverly and he wants to just keep working with showing people film on film. Maybe he wants to really focus on that. So who's to say? I do love that this is going to be about a pugnacious film critic, right? If you're pugnacious, you are eager to argue. And what could be more meta than Quentin Tarantino making a film about a pugnacious movie critic when he has said things on record constantly like i don't make these for you <laughs> he's been very very recalcitrant to even heed the words of credit uh, critics throughout his career so i think this is going to be a really fun look at his own work um i think it's going to be pretty pretty meta throughout it and obviously he really loves the filmmaking of the 70s too so i think we'll see more of that kind of love letter to film that he is known for but i'm interested to see how this is going to pan out and if it is a more uh, more cruel look at the work of film critics and what they do, or if it's going to be him taking a little slice of humble pie a little bit too. It's going to be interesting, especially if this is supposed to be his swan song, to see how he feel, feels about what movie critics do. Well, I remember too, this is one movie critic in particular that he actually loves. Yeah. So looking at it from her perspective is kind of interesting. So let's, let's pretend. Let's live in a pretend world for a second, okay? Pretend world. Let's say that this is going to be Tarantino's last film, which it will not be his last film, but let's say it is. As you look back at his incredible filmography, what would you say is your favorite Quentin Tarantino movie? If, if this was the end of it and whatever, it's all wrapped up. Now, obviously, we haven't seen The Movie Critic yet, but yeah. that one aside, what would you say is your favorite Tarantino film? I love Inglorious Bastards. Mm. I think that movie is so well done. I could watch just that scene in the bar on a loop forever. <laughs> I love the tension he created there. And then Jackie Brown is another incredible film that I don't think enough people talk about. No, that one's that one's underrated. Mm -hmm. Obviously there's Pulp Fiction, yeah. uh, which uh, you know a lot of people like. I, the, the only film he ever made that I just straight up didn't like was Death Proof. That's, that's the, out of all of his filmography, the only film he made that I didn't like was Death yeah. Proof. That, that was, and I didn't even hate it. I, I just, you know, it's just one I didn't like. I constantly go back and forth between the third most recent film that he made and the fourth most recent film that he made, which is, oh no, third, fourth, fifth. I, I lost, anyway, Inglorious Bastards. Yeah, third most recent and fourth most recent. Inglorious Bastards and Django. I keep going back and forth between them. Um, and it wasn't until Ray, I think we did a movie club of Django uh, last year. And I think that was the one, that that one screening of Django, maybe I think pushed that one to the forefront for me. I didn't love Hateful Eight, but I, but I liked it. I liked Hateful Eight, but I didn't love it. I was not as big on Once Upon a Time in Hollywood as a lot of people are. Like, again, I liked it, but I, I don't think it should have been nominated for Best Picture, but I still liked it. Doesn't do it for me. But oh my God, Django and Inglorious Bastards and, and you know, like six of his other films. But I, I think... I think I'll say Django is my favorite, but Inglorious Bastards would be a close second. Anyway, guys, the question is for you. What do you think about the sounds of what is reportedly going to be Quentin Tarantino, one of the most celebrated directors in the world, his last film called The Movie Critic? And do you actually believe that this will be his last film? Whatever you guys think, jump down into the comments section below and let us know your thoughts. So we want to take a second to thank a sponsor of today's video, Manscaped. Breaking news, Manscaped now sells beard products. That's right, they are once again revolutionizing men's grooming with the brand new Beard Hedger Pro Kit. Now you can finally use Manscaped products to make your drapes match your carpet by going to manscaped.com and using the code 
Campia for 20% off and free shipping. It all starts with the Beard Hedger. This thing is a juggernaut of fixing faces. First off, this cordless trimmer has a rotary wheel that gives you 20 hair cutting lengths, all with one guard. So no more messy drawers full of extra add-ons. You also get the Beard Shampoo and Conditioner. Because guys, you gotta remember that all of your hair is different. Your beard hair is more coarse and easier to damage than the hair on your head. Next, the kit has Manscaped's Beard Oil. The oil relieves dryness both on the beard and the skin beneath. You then cap it off with the Beard Balm that shapes, styles, moisturizes, and tames for a sculpted look. The Pro Beard Kit also comes with three special gifts, a beard brush, comb, and scissors to ensure your beard is ready to impress. With a nice beard, your face is perfectly groomed, right? Wrong. You need to keep an eye out for those tough to trim ear and nose hairs. The brand new Weed Whacker 2.0 offers improved blades and skin safe technology with a no tugging guarantee. It's never been so painless to mind your manholes. And now that you have your face looking great, you must try Manscaped's Performance Package 4.0 for the full body grooming experience. And good news, the Performance Package 4.0 now comes with the Weed Whacker 2.0 and all of the other below the waist grooming products that Manscaped is known for. Your significant other will be delighted to see you covering all bases, if you know what I mean. So get 20% off and free shipping with the code CAMPIA at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use the code CAMPIA. Manscaped Beard Hedger, one stroke, one guard, 20 lengths.